So today's topic is, do you need a complex user experience full of features to get users to use your product? So that really depends on who your target audience is, but I generally suggest that people who are starting a startup try to not overload their initial minimum viable product, or even if they're months down the line and say, already getting some traction, try not to overwhelm your users with lots of features thinking that that is how you're going to get people to use your product. From my experience, at least with Ricci, it seems like only one or two things tend to stick out of the five to 10 things we've tried to do for our users. When we're thinking about those features and whether to build them, they always seem very impressive initially, but then after we launch them and no one uses them, it turns out that no one really cared. So I know that's part of the product development process. Features don't always pan out. People don't always use the features that you think they want. People don't always go for the benefits that you prov provide with those features, but I still think that you shouldn't be building a complex user experience full of lots of different features. If you want to test lots of features and want to know which ones are actually the ones your users want, try to slowly roll out those features. Don't build everything right off the bat and overcomplicate your product. Something else I've noticed is that when you have lots of feature ideas and you build them all at once and you launch them all at once, you end up messing up your entire user experience and you overcomplicate it to a point where your user doesn't know what to do next. So yeah, that's what you want to do when you're building a product. Don't try to overcomplicate the user experience, try to simplify it. And also I would say take small steps in the direction you want to take, but take small steps, slowly roll things out. Don't try to roll lots of things out very quickly because you're just gonna end up messing up the entire user experience and make your product very hard to use, which is the opposite of what you want with a minimum viable product. Hard meaning sure, maybe your product isn't as polished visually as you think it should be, but it shouldn't be impossible to use as in you don't know what to do when you land on say a web page of yours or when they click this button, nothing happens and they don't know what to do next, which is actually very common with um, lots of startup products. It's very common to have products that have lots of features, have a lot of value to provide, but because they're literally unusable because the user experience is extremely complicated and maybe the founders themselves don't even know where things are going and where things are, how do you expect a user to extract any sort of value from the product you've created, right? Because if you, the founder, if even you think your user experience is too messy and too complicated, your users are just not gonna use your product. So yeah, just a couple of thoughts about why you should be going for a simple user experience. Another thing that a lot of people probably still believe and I think is starting to change is that you can get away with a broken, poor looking MVP. I mean, sure, there are so many examples of products that still don't look visually great that people still use, but those tend to be established brands with poor user experience, not poor user experience, but user experiences that don't look as polished as they could be. Nowadays, if you're trying to stand out in whatever niche you've chosen, in whatever industry you've chosen, you want to make sure that, in fact, I would say that having a user experience that looks visually interesting and appealing and having very simple features and very simple value to provide that actually is much better than having a product that provides immense value, but doesn't look great, has bad UI UX, so users don't know how to navigate the product. And it just looks bad in general. It looks like some sort of high school project. And that's what a lot of MVPs look like. I think that it pays to do that initially to learn from your users, but eventually if you want to get traction out of your MVP, you're going to have to make it look it, you're gonna have to make it look far more polished and far more professional than say MVPs from 10 years ago where maybe consumers weren't as used to polished websites and apps as they are used to them now. They're more used to them now, they expect this sort of thing. 
they don't care that you're a new company. They're just going to use whatever is smooth and whatever feels good. And that usually tends to be more polished user experiences, websites, apps. So pay attention to how your app and website looks because apparently that now matters a lot more than, say, if you were launching a website or app 10 years ago.